I'm going to be reading to you out of the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel. My wife this morning told me I could only tell two jokes during my whole sermon. She said, you're not a stand-up comedian. You need to preach. So I said, can I get three? Can I get three jokes? If y'all don't know me, my name's Anthony Browning, and I love Aldi's. <laughs> it's real, y'all. I found out about two weeks ago, I'm raising two kids. They want to stay out of the kitchen. Any of y'all got boys in here? Get out of the kitchen. Eating all my cashews and my Cheez-Its. We went to the store the other day, got a whole box of Cheez-Its. I come home, the whole box is gone. Before I, before I go in the back, come back, he ate the whole box of Cheez-Its. Leave my Cheez-Its alone. Tell a person, sorry, leave my Cheez-Its alone. <laughs> leave my Cheez-Its. But I went to Aldi's and I got a whole week's worth of groceries for a hundred bucks. Can I get an amen, amen up in here for some Aldi's? Praise the Lord. I got filet mignon. I got chicken. I got chicken. I got some bacon. I love some Aldi's. All right, that, that's my first joke. Amen. I get two more, two more this morning. I'm going to be reading to you out of the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 9. And we're at a place where King David had just come into his rightful place. Can I tell you that God has a rightful place for everybody in this room? No matter where you are at today, no matter what people think about you, no matter what people say about you, no matter what you think about yourself, God has a place for you in the kingdom. Can I get an amen up in this house this morning? Amen. 2 Samuel chapter number nine, verse number one, and it says, And David said, Is there still anyone? Somebody say anyone. anyone. Is there anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, it's awesome to be in your presence today, Father. It's awesome to be in your house with some good people, Father. I pray that you would do something amazing in this place today, Father, and thank you for all these. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Amen, amen. amen. In this text this morning, we're at a place where King David had just came into his rightful place and he had been through hell on earth to get to where he needed to be. If there is anybody in this place today that has went through some things to get to where you are, you've gone through some stuff. If you've got some teenagers, you're going through it right now. Amen. You've gone through some things. You had to go through college with no money. You had to eat your last meal on a Friday and hopefully get paid on Saturday. And they decided to pay you on Monday and you had to figure it out till Monday. Am I the only one up in this mug today? Amen. And I said mug. I told my wife I wouldn't say mug too. Amen. Help me, Jesus. But King David had went through hell on earth because his mentor was jealous of him. Have you ever been in a place where your mentor, those that should be pouring into you and loving you, are trying to kill you? He was wanting to kill David. The Bible says he even threw a javelin to try to kill him and he hid in caves and, and ran from the king. And, but he was always faithful to the anointing. He was always faithful to the, those that God put over him. He was always faithful. And I got to believe if you just stay faithful, if you just put up with the junk, and I'm the worst at it. I hate junk. I hate mean I want you to be nice. Be nice. Tell the first side you be nice. nice. But David had been through it, man. He, he had people that were jealous of his anointing, people that tried to kill him. Have you ever had anybody try to kill you? Maybe they didn't try to kill you physically, but they tried to kill your ministry. They tried to kill your business. They tried to kill your marriage. Oh, have you ever had your spouse have a bad friend? Giving them bad advice. Y'all are quiet in here this morning. <laughs> I'm back to my notes. But you can't stop God's anointing, amen? amen? You can't stop what God has called you to do. You can't stop it. If you're a king in this place today, you don't have the option to quit. 
You get to the place sometimes where you just want to give up, man. Have you ever been to the place where you just wanted to give up? I got to believe there was times when King David wanted to give up when he's hiding in, in caves with rats and slime growing on the walls and he's got all the outcast guys. He didn't have all the great guys, but he trained them up to be great warriors for God. But the Bible says that all those who were afflicted or in debt or outcasts were the ones that ran and hung out with David in caves. And I've got to believe that he probably wanted to just give up. But can I tell you, if you're a king, if God has called you to do great things, you can't give up because there's people depending on you. There's people that are depending on what you do. There's a reason why God's put you in this place to produce because you are the king, baby. Look at the man beside of you and tell him, you're a king. You're a king. You're a king. All the men here say, yeah. I'm the king up in this mud. Amen. I said mug twice. I need to quit. But what has happened here is King Saul didn't listen to the man of God. The man of God told him to kill it all. The man of God told him not to do this, not to do that. And Saul, he, he didn't listen. He didn't listen. Have you ever met somebody who just didn't listen? You're looking at one of them. I'm not good at listening. Ask my wife. But King Saul didn't listen, and he ends up losing the kingdom, and he goes into battle, and him and his son, he and his son are in battle, and they are murdered in battle, and, and they die, and the king dies and the kingdom is getting overtaken and, and they have this son, his name's Mephibosheth. Everybody say Mephibosheth. All right, now say it 10 times. I'm kidding. But they had this son, his name was Mephibosheth and he was running or he was only a baby and his nurse was running out of the house and the Bible says that his nurse drops him. Be careful who you let carry you. Be careful who you marry. Be careful what business you latch on to. Be careful what ministry you sit up under. Be careful. Tell a person, be careful. Because they just might drop you. Have you ever been dropped before? Have you ever dropped a baby before? Shame on you. Don't drop a baby. <laughs> One time... We were in the, my mom and dad's house and, and one of my uh, nieces was watching Noah in the other room and all of a sudden we heard boom, boom and she had accidentally, I think Noah was on the bed and he was dropped and he fell off the bed on his head, but thank God he was okay. But the fear that grips you when a baby is dropped, it's scary, ain't it? You're like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You pick him up and you're, you're scared that something's wrong, and, but be careful who you let carry you. Sometimes you don't have a choice who carries you. Sometimes you was just born into this situation. Sometimes you was just born into this family. All the other kids get school clothes, but you don't even know what school clothes are. You ever heard of hand-me-downs? Try to get an amen for hand-me-downs. Yeah. All the other kids get a new pair of shoes, but you don't even know what a new pair of shoes are. And you feel like you've been dropped into this situation. Have you ever been dropped before? You thought they had your back, but they dropped you like a rock. They dropped you like it's hot. Everybody say, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> you got married and they dropped you. Oh, you fell in love. Oh, isn't love wonderful? Love is great when you're in love. But when you roll over and they got dragon breath in your face after three weeks of being married, <laughs> it's not so fun anymore. When the extraordinary becomes ordinary and the love starts to fade, that's when the real work comes in. Amen? Yeah. Amen? But then all of a sudden you turn around one day and they dropped you. You took the job. You were so excited about this job. You went to college for four years and you, you went through all the interviews and you were the chosen one out of 100 people. You got the job. I got the job, honey. You go home and tell your wife. You go home and tell your husband, I got the job. I got the job. They even gave me a sign-on bonus. And you show up the first day and meet your boss, and they are mean. They get drunk on their lunch break. Mean. My first job, never mind. I ain't gonna go there. <laughs> you stepped into a ministry, and you thought it was gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be great. Everybody's going to love me. People are so friendly. 
They're so nice and loving, compassionate, and they're going to support everything I step out to do. And they drop you. Have you ever been dropped before? You cried out to your family. I need you. And they dropped you. You put your faith in your friends and they dropped you. You went into business. Any of y'all ever go into business? Anybody? I'm the only one. And then you get a partner. Don't ever get a partner. Because you're married. When you get a partner, amen. It's for life. Unless you buy each other out. But then they drop you. Mephibosheth had been dropped. Have you ever been here before? I want to talk to all the Mephibosheths in the room today. You may feel like you're a mistake. You may feel like you are an outcast. You feel like that everybody else has got it going on. Everybody else's ministry is going on. Everybody else's business is going on. You almost feel like you're sitting on the side of the four lane and it's just shoo, shoo, shoo. everything's going great for everybody else. You know, it looks easy on the outside, but there's a reason because they probably went through some hell themselves. All of us have dealt with some stuff ourselves. Can I get an amen up in this place today? And you feel like everybody else is going on with what they want to do. And you feel like a Mephibosheth and you're sitting there crippled. God, I can't even do anything. I've tried everything I can do, God. And I feel like I'm out of place. If that's you here today, if your path is difficult, it's because your purpose is bigger than you thought. If your path is difficult, you need to get a tattoo with that on it. If your path is difficult, it's because your purpose is bigger than what you thought. Tell the person beside of you, it's bigger, it's bigger, it's, it's bigger. I know that you went through this because, because God's got something better for you down the road. I know that God has a, has a better purpose for you. I know this didn't work out, but God's got a better purpose for you. I know this didn't look like it did when it was finished. It didn't work out the way you thought it would, but, but God's got a purpose. God's got a, God's got a place for you to go. God's got a thing for you to do. I heard a guy last night, we went to this conference and I heard a guy last night talking about playing video games. Any of y'all like ever playing video games? Man, y'all don't like video games up in here? I used to love some video games. Well, back in the day, you would play a video game. Kids got it too easy these days. Kids these days, you know, they can, they, they just, I don't know what they do. They just run around in the field and there ain't really no purpose. They're shooting people and stuff. But anyway, in the old days, you'd play a video game and if you if your guy got killed or you died, you had to start off all the way at the beginning. Y'all remember that? They got it too easy today. But he was talking about how when they finally came out with the video games where you got past a certain checkpoint, you started back off at that checkpoint. I got a message for you today. You maybe didn't work out like you thought it would. It maybe didn't turn out the way that you thought it would. But God has a checkpoint for you. So if you maybe took a step back, you maybe fell down flat on your face. If you'll just get back up and start going in the direction that God has for you, you're going to start right back off at the checkpoint that you stopped at. Can I get an amen up in this place today? God saw you. God saw you crying in the middle of the night. God saw you when they walked out on you. God saw you when they were talking about you and all you was trying to do was good. God saw you, baby. He saw you when you cried your tears. He saw you when you didn't receive your healing, but you still believed in him regardless of what was going on around you. He saw you when you were sitting there addicted. He saw you when you at your lowest point, and he's got a checkpoint for you, baby. If you'll just step back into the place that he has for you, you're going to leave and start right where you left off. Can I get an amen up in this place today? But then in this text today, it goes from bad to worse. Don't worry, it gets better. But it's bad right now. We find Mephibosheth in Lodabar. Everybody say low the bar. It's low in Lodabar. It's dark in Lodabar. Lodabar is the place where you go buy an eight ball of cocaine. Some of you are like, what's an eight ball? I've never seen one, but I just heard about them. <laughs> Lodabar is the place where if you robbed a bank, you would go hide. Lodabar is the place where the criminals went and hung out. Lodabar was a dark place, and here we find a prince in Lodabar. Have you ever felt out of place? 
Have you ever felt like you was just out of place? Like you just, nobody gets me. Nobody understands. Have you ever felt out of place? I, I tell you, when something's out of place, it's just weird, right? I came home. We got home late last night. I just like, man, I got to get in the bed. I got to preach tomorrow. And I go in the bathroom and I get ready to get in the shower and I turn the shower on and I just, you know, I glimpsed in the shower and I thought, what? Is that an iPad in the shower? Why is there an iPad in our shower? But I got two boys. That's why there's an iPad in the shower. <laughs> iPads aren't supposed to take a bath. Amen. <laughs> like, oh gosh, I turned the water off and dried it off. And I asked my wife, I said, babe, why is there an iPad in the shower? She said, I couldn't find any place to hide it from them. <laughs> <laughs> an iPad in the shower. Help me, Jesus. But when something's out of place, have you ever felt out of place? The word Lodabar literally means no pastor, pasture, like grass, no word, no communication. Have you ever been in a place of no green grass? Seems like everything's dying around you. Have you ever been in a place of no growth, no sustenance, no food on the table? No word, no communication. You know, there's got to be communication. Communication is critical. Can I get an amen in here today? If you've ever seen a dying marriage, you've seen a marriage that there's no, no communication. Y'all may have to fight it out. I don't recommend arguing, but sometimes these people that say, oh, we never argue. Somebody's not being real. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with being positive, Amen. But sometimes you're going to have to, hash, have to hash it out and still go to bed together. Can I get an amen? amen. Have you ever slept like on the corner, corner, corner? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to fall out, but I'm mad. Are you going to prove your point looking stupid? Can I get an amen? <laughs> Stealing my covers. Come on. No communication. Communication is so critical. You, you don't believe me? I used to go into um, maximum security prisons and preach. I love doing that. I, I, I would like to start doing that again. And it was so awesome. We would go into these prisons, man, and these guys would listen. And it was so sad because there was babies in there. They were 18 years old, and they're in there for the rest of their life. It was just horrible. But you take the biggest, baddest prisoner. One time we were walking through the yard at this prison, you know, where they work out and they have basketball goals and they're out to watch the TV and stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm walking with my big Dake annotated study Bible, my full suit, because I'm church of God, preacher man, you know. And we're walking across this yard and these guys are playing basketball. All of a sudden, the basketball drops and they all stand there and watch me walk across this yard. And I'm walking with this little girl and all she has is a walkie-talkie. And I'm like, where's your gun? <laughs> What are you gonna do? Poke them in the eye with your antenna? <laughs> They're looking at us. <laughs> and we're walking. She said, You see those guys up in those towers? They all have uh, rifles and they got us protected. I said, Okay, let's get across this yard real quick, like. But you go into a prison and you can take the biggest, baddest prisoner, muscles popping out of the side of his neck. You can tase him and he'll keep coming at you. You can spray him with mace and he'll keep coming at you. He'll spit on you. You can hold him down and he'll still keep fighting. You put him in a pen, he'll kill, still keep fighting. But you take that same big bad man and put him in a place of isolation, he'll go crazy. Communication is critical. Communication is critical in ministry. Talk to your leadership. Amen? Amen. Talk to your, your staff. Talk to the people that you work with. Communication is critical in business. Talk to your people. Amen? Amen. Don't just think that you put things in place and everything's going to be perfect because people don't care sometimes. Nobody cares about your business the way you care about your business. Can I get an amen? amen? But this was a place of restriction. Have you ever felt restrained before? God, I want to go forward. I want to do the great things. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, God, God, you know, I am getting old, God. My hair's falling out. I want to go forward in what you want for me to do. I, God, I know you put something down inside of me and I just got to do it or I'm going to die. God, I'm either going forward or I'm going backward, God. I can't just sit still, God, and I want to move forward and you feel restricted. Y'all know what being restricted is like. 
Have you ever went to Disney on New Year's Eve? Don't do it. You go to Disney on New Year's Eve and you're in line for five hours for one ride. It's restricted. Am I the only one in here? Don't go to Disney on New Year's, amen? Amen. But they were in a place of restriction and Lodabar was this kind of place. There was no love. There was no peace. There was no content. There was no happiness because they were always in survival mode and it was real poverty. Have you ever seen real poverty before? Man, I I thought I saw poverty in West Virginia, but you go to Swaziland, Africa. We've been to Swaziland a couple of times and there is nothing in certain places. Here, poverty may be a shack out in the country somewhere and they have floors, but it's, it's kind of rough. They got a beat up car. They got food stamps. They got a track phone. You know, they, you know they, they're getting by barely. You go over there, poverty, they have no floors in their house. They have no car. They have no food. And it was a place of poverty. Lodabar was a place of poverty. Have you ever felt like you was in Lodabar before? Not knowing what's going to happen. No word. God, talk to me. Me, me, me. God, I need you to move in my life. God, I'm a prince. I was born into royalty. I got your blood flowing through my veins. God, talk to me. Me, me. Y'all think I'm crazy, don't you? (laughs) No dreams. No goals. And you start to settle. Have you ever just said, you know what? I'm just going to settle right here in Lodabar. God, it's been years I've been in Lodabar. And this is where we find Mephibosheth in a dark place, in an evil place. But can I tell you, God specializes in evil places. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus had just stepped down off the ship with the, with the disciples. They just came through a bad storm and He steps down off the ship and I got to believe when his feet hit the ground, there was a boom in the atmosphere. I believe the demons and legion, there was a man called legion in the cemetery, in the tombs. And the Bible said he would go and cut himself and run around naked and just was crazy, run around talking in other voices and stuff. And I I got to believe that he knew Jesus was in that, well, the demons inside of him knew that Jesus was in the place and he comes running up to Jesus and he says, why have you come before our, our time, our time? It was crazy, man. I don't know if you've ever been around somebody that's been in that state or been in that such, a, such an evil state to where they're, they're pretty much demon possessed. I, I, I've been around that before and it's a crazy thing. And there is the evil in this world and this, this, this legion came to him. But can I tell you, God specializes in evil places. God can bring you out of any situation. I wonder how legion got there. When I think about the story of legion, what hurt him? What hurt him. And I've got a question for you today. Who hurt you? Who hurt you to get you to the place that you don't even talk to God anymore? Who hurt you to get you to the place where you just feel like giving up and going home and throwing in? Who hurt you, man? What happened to make you want to settle? Pain will cause you to settle or give up to avoid disappointment. Have you ever been there before? I ain't going to try to love her no more. She done turned me down 652 times. Why am I going to try 653? Can I get an amen up in the house today? And all of a sudden, Jesus turns to him and he casts them out and he says, can we go in the swine? He casts them into the pigs and the pigs go down into the water. And here we find legion now, a whole man sitting beside Jesus. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 15, it says, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had, had legions in him sitting and clothed and in his right mind. How is your mind today? Does God need to get in your mind and get your mind right? And they were afraid. The people were afraid that such a miracle had happened. I don't know where you are today. You may be at your lowest place today and the enemy may be tormenting to you today, but I have good news for you today. There's room at the table for you. There's room at the table. Go ahead, give him a hand clap up in this place. There's room. There's room. Tell the person side of you, there's room. 
There's room, baby. If you're at this place today, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has a place at his table for you. King David said, go get that boy. Go get him. He'd been down there for years. He said, go get that boy. Go get that prince down there. And can you imagine how Mephibosheth felt? He probably was in rags, a prince. The prince is dressed in rags and he was crippled. He couldn't move his legs. He couldn't go to the bathroom by himself. He was crippled. And all of a sudden, hey, Mephibosheth, there's some men here to see you. What? King David's men are here to see you. Can you imagine how he felt? He probably thought, man, they're probably coming to kill me because my grandpa tried to kill him. He's coming here to kill me. Have you ever went into a situation thinking that it's going to be worse than what it is and find out that it's actually a blessing? Can I get an amen? Have you ever had your wife call you and say, I want to talk to you when you get home? And you're thinking, what did I do? I can't even remember what I did. What have I done? What did I do? What did I, I ain't done nothing. I don't know what I do. And you pull in the neighborhood and you're like getting ready to pull in the driveway and you're like, oh, I'm going to drive around a little bit. Think about this. <laughs> Um, what did I do? What did, I don't know what I did. What did I do? What, what did I say? What did I, what did I do, God? What did I do? Okay, I'm pulling the driveway. You pull it, and there's rose petals on the floor. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> or you're in corporate America, and your boss says, we need to talk to you in a minute. You're like, oh, gosh, man, I got bills to pay. I'm already getting a little bit behind. I got to go talk to these people, man. And you walk in the room and your boss is there and your boss's boss is there and your boss's boss's boss is there and they push a piece of paper across the table to you. You think, oh gosh, and it's a promotion. Have you ever walked into a situation and it turned out way better than you thought it was going to be? Can I get an amen up in here? And Mephibosheth probably thought, man, here we go. This is it. I've lived in misery my whole life. Might as well go ahead and die. Go ahead and chop my head off, king. Go ahead. But the Bible says that he calls him to the table. And this is no ordinary table, man. There's blessings at this table. Have you ever sat with the king before? At the king's table, there is peace. At the king's table, there is the best food you've ever ate before. At the king's table, somebody say at the king's table. Man, have you ever ate a meal that was so good you wanted to cry? Like this meal, baby, this meal is so good. There's these filet medallions at Ducati's down in Myrtle Beach. Go, 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 just go down there and cry. I mean, it's just awesome. Some of the best steak I ever ate in my life. But at the king's table is the best food. At the king's table, do you remember when you first got saved? Man, food even tasted good, didn't it? The sky looked different, didn't it? When you have the king in your heart, and you could sit at his table, peace, like you've never experienced before. I have a good friend that just lost his wife. That dude has peace like I've never seen before. He walks around smiling when he should be in the mental hospital. Can I get an amen? Peace. Somebody say peace. peace. Anxiety has to go. Debt has to flee. Misery has to go. And the Bible says that Mephibosheth is sitting at his table and the king tells him, look, Mephibosheth, not only are you going to sit at my table for the rest of your life, you're going to get all the property back, baby. And not only are you going to get all the property back, all your daddy's servants are going to serve you now. All your daddy's servants, he's got over 20 servants and 20 sons, I believe it says. He got a lot of dudes to help him. They go out and work his fields and he gets it all back. Can I tell you that God's going to give it all back to you, baby? Can I get an amen up in here? You're going to get it back. Tell the person you're going to get it back. You're going to get your ministry back. You're going to get your business back. You're going to get your people back. Can I get an amen up in here? Some of y'all got kids that are out there. They're not serving God like they used to, or they don't even want to have nothing to do with you. You're going to get them back today. Can I get an amen in this place? You're going to get them back. You're going to get them back. Somebody say at his table. At his table is peace like you've never experienced. But in closing, as the worship team comes out, Mephibosheth never got his healing. He got his stuff back. 
But can I tell you today that it don't always happen the way you think it's going to happen, but God's still got a blessing for you. They may still walk out on you. They may still never come back, but God's got a blessing for you. You may not get everything back like it used to be. You may still be crippled physically, but God still has a blessing for you. I thought of the, the man at the gate called Beautiful. Y'all know the story? And Peter's walking into the temple and he's begging for money at the gate called Beautiful. And he looks at him and says, silver and gold have a number. What I do have, I'm gonna give to you, boy. Stand up and walk. And he stands up and walks. But why does God heal that boy, but not Mephibosheth? Because God works in mysterious ways, man. But I've got a word for somebody in this place today. Even though you don't get your healing, even though it don't work out the way that you think it should work out, you're still going to get a blessing. <laughs> you're still going to get a blessing, man. And when he blesses you, no one can touch you, baby. <laughs> when he blesses you, they're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about you anyway. If you ride the bus, they're going to talk about you. If you roll in the bins, they're going to talk about you. <laughs> if you wear Jordans, they're going to talk about you. If you wear a full suit, they're going to talk about you. If you wear swimming trunks to church, they're going to talk about you. So be you, baby. Do you and walk in the blessings that he has for your life. No matter what people say about you, no matter what people think about you, walk in that thing, baby. Walk in that thing. Walk in that thing. Can I get an amen? amen? If you would stand all over this house with me this morning. I want to talk to all the Mephibosheths in the room. And guess who that is? Everybody in the room. We all got a little Mephibosheth in us. We all have some situations that have happened in our lives. If you're on planet Earth, you're going through something at some given time. Can I get an amen in here? All over this house, if you would close your eyes for a second. The struggle, the pain, the things that have come against you are only a sign of where God wants to take you into the destiny that he has for you. Jesus came to this world, was crucified, and buried, it looked like it was over. But on the third day, he came out of that grave, baby, so that you could be saved. What do you mean, Pastor Anthony? What I mean is that you could call on his name today and say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Forgive me where I mess up. Look, you're looking at the chief of sinners up here, guys. But God can take the messed up people and use them in mighty ways. He can take your messed up situation. He can take you and use you in such a mighty way today. But first, you got to come to him. Why don't you come sit at this table? Come sit with the king. It's time to come out of Loda Bar. If that's you here today and you would say, Anthony, I've never asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and save me. Would you throw your hand up right now? That's me, Pastor Anthony. That's me. That's me, man. I want to get right with Jesus today. Is there anybody? Amen. If you're here today, you say, Anthony, I've been in a dark place. I have Jesus in my heart, but I've been in a dark place and I need his help today to deal with this situation, to deal with this struggle, to deal with this pain. If that's you here today, would you throw your hand up? Amen. Amen. He sees your hand. He sees your hand, man all over this room. Just call on them right now. Father, I come to you. Lord, forgive me for any sin that's in my life, God. Lord, help me to be the person you've called me to be. Help me to move into the destiny that you've called me to move into, Father. You know my situation. You know my hurt. You know my pain. You see me at one in the morning, God, when the enemy comes crawling into my room, God, and, and I feel like there's no one around and I need help, Father. I need some peace. I need some contentment, Father. I'm asking you today to take it all away in the name of Jesus.